you are listening to Kubernetes Byte, a podcast bringing you the latest from the world of cloud-native data management. My name is Ryan Walner, and I'm joined by Bob and Shaw, coming to you from Boston, Massachusetts. We'll be sharing our thoughts on recent cloud-native news and talking to industry experts about their experiences and challenges managing the wealth of data in today's cloud-native ecosystem. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are. We're coming to you from Boston, Massachusetts. Today is May 10th, 2023. I hope everyone is doing well and staying safe. Bavin, let's dive into it. How's it going? How you been? I've been great, dude. Like the weather is awesome. Like summer is, (laughs) I'm hoping summer is finally here. I... (laughs) So we, uh, we did a short weekend trip to Burlington, Vermont. Uh, yeah. And when we booked it, right, like we booked it like two, three weeks back, the weather was going to be in the 50s. We're like, yeah, we can still sit inside breweries and have some good beer. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but then when we when we reached, the weather was 70 degrees and it was awesome. Like, whew, oh, that wow, was a great yeah. weekend. I call this season fall summer. Yeah, I'm okay uh, with that. <laughs> Um, there's always fall, summer, and then we go back a little bit and, you know, it's super cold. I saw it's supposed to be like 38 degrees tonight. So yeah. it's like, you know, when you, when you're, when you're that cold at night, it just doesn't make sense to me, but yeah, I'm, I'm jacked for it. I was wearing shorts yesterday, so I'm living it just, yeah. you know, I'm just as hopeful as you are. <laughs> Burlington's nice though. I haven't been back up. I'm excited. I, I'm going back up to Toronto a few times this summer. So. I know like, but I think I'd been to Burlington once, but we did such a, uh, like a fast trip like one day yeah. we went there had lunch had a beer and came back this time we're like yeah. nope we have to stay there for at least one night but you drove and, to burlington for lunch did i just hear that right no so we were camping in the adirondacks and we were like okay oh on the way back we'll actually stop by burlington nope i didn't make the three and a half hour drive for lunch i was like wow you must really like something from something there. <laughs> Although the food that I had there, I made a reservation at this uh, Asian place called Single Pebble. It was okay. really good. Like All really right. good food. Shout out to Single Pebble. Yeah, I know. Great, well, great no name. Sponsors, I'm a fan of names. Great name. <laughs> and and the best part, like when you, uh, I, I, we did take out, uh, like take some food with us. Yeah. They give, they give you a single pebble, like as part of the takeout. Like, <laughs> oh no way. They're, so they're living their name. I love that. Oh, that's, that's great. Oh, wow. Was it like a, like a marble pebble or like, no, just like they, pebble, they, they went on sure the, they just the go outside. And just, yeah. <laughs> Okay. This is a good customer. Maybe we give them a good pebble. <laughs> we save our good good pebbles for the real people. Oh wow, that's fun. Yeah. Well, you had you had more fun than I did. Uh, we've been kind of hunkered down here. My wife just had surgery, and you know she's fine. But uh, you know we've been kind of laying low and enjoying some kind of yeah. people come to us time. <laughs> so you know can't complain too much here. Um, but otherwise, been chilling close to home. So you know nice. nothing no, too I'm exciting. Glad feeling here. better and like yeah. things are improving. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So we have a really, really fun uh, episode today. Mm -hmm. Um, We have uh, some great guests from MLB and Medify on the show. But before we jump on um, and introduce them a little bit, uh, let's go into our news a little bit. Yeah, sure. Uh, So talking about KubeCon, right? We did a whole episode, but uh, as a follow up or one last thing, the KubeCon sessions are now live on YouTube. So uh, if you are like me and you didn't actually make it to Amsterdam, I'm jealous. Still, Ryan. (laughs) Uh, Well, you you know, I didn't get to watch that many uh, sessions, uh, honestly. So I'll be watching them too. All the sessions are live. And we'll include the link to the YouTube playlist in the show notes. Uh, So uh, I'm sure I'm going through them one day or one session or a couple of sessions every day while i'm yeah doing some work Good but idea. that's live um cube cost one of our friends right like they were on the podcast to talk about yep. kubernetes cost management they have a new public beta for their cube cost cloud offering where instead of having to deploy cube costs on your kubernetes cluster all you need is to deploy an agent it connects back to your hosted or cloud solution and okay. then you can look at you all like the uh, you can look at your entire estate and do cost management f- across all the different Kubernetes solutions that they support. So you can have EKS, GKE, AKS, instead of deploying cube cost in each, you can basically connect everything through agents to that one single pay- portal. Very, very cool. Uh, talking about Chill Vibes and 1.27, <laughs> I oh, still yeah, love that name. Chill Vibes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, uh, I, I think you referred to this, but uh, I, I just wanted to make sure that we highlight it, right? Like uh, vo- group volume snapshots uh, are now alpha with the 1.27 release. So again, volume snapshots has been, have been a thing in the CSI standard for a while, at least two, three releases, if not more. Group volume snapshots adds the capability to take 
uh, PVCs that may be belonging, belonging to a, the same stateful set with multiple replicas mm-hmm. and take a crash consistent snapshot and, uh, and, and protect your PVCs. So uh, it's in alpha. So I'm sure you'll have to enable that feature flag to actually experiment with it, but it's live. And we will link to the blog article that uh, a Kubernetes by alumni Xing Yang did uh, yes. on the topic. Yes, absolutely. And then uh, final note, I know we have an uh, end user perspective today on the show, but even even when we are talking to MLB, I was like, let me see if we can find any more cool uh, use cases. And uh, one came across, Coinbase actually uses Kubernetes for uh, running their staking nodes on the ah, cloud. Okay. So right. uh, they have a, a, an interesting article on how they actually use it. What are the different Kubernetes primitives? So they talk about using stateful sets. They talk about using PVCs. They talk about how they're using config maps and secrets for configuration information. And so it's a great read, uh, a quick read. I think it took me five minutes, if not less. But yeah, it goes into a good amount of detail to should share their experiences and i'm sure like they're using communities outside this sta- these staking nodes as well but again that's another cool article that i found this week yeah absolutely i think we've had a few guests in the sort of the crypto space that um yep. have also used kubernetes so it seems like a popular tool for the job i guess mm-hmm. i'll have to go read that one myself <clears throat> um yeah the first bit of news i have here is that the if, if you submitted a, a cfp to uh-huh. kubecon eu you might probably have been one of the ones who did not get accepted yep. because they mm-hmm. had an 11 percent acceptance rate yeah um something like almost 2000 <laughs> um submissions down to 300 or something mm-hmm. like that. Uh, don't quote me on the numbers. It's in the article, <laughs> but uh, it was very low. Uh, so anyway, they're getting a, a crazy amount of volume yeah. of submissions, and I think they need to grow with the community and w- how many are being mm-hmm. su- uh, submitted. So new platform, if you've submitted before, look out for something new rolling out um, and read the article. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think it's going to be anything major to the end user, but, um, you know, something to keep in mind that if you log on and say this looks different it probably is yeah like uh, i wanted to yeah. uh, i think uh, that's another thing right i've submitted cfps uh, for kubecons in the past never never do they get accepted so i'm still annoyed by the fact but again uh, as it's you hard. said right 11 percent. Yeah. yeah i yeah. don't think my cfp was good enough to be in the top 11 percent uh, i would just hope like cncf makes it like a five-day conference instead of a two-day conference so that more people can share what they're working on again they That's a lot still, of Kubernetes in one week. Uh, I don't think either of us would mind that. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right. And, yeah. uh, you know, I think in lieu of getting more people to speak in the community yeah. to come along, I think I'm all for that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, in general, yeah, it's tough. You know, it's not a gamble. Yeah. There are ways to definitely make your CFP sort of um, more interesting or maybe yeah. tailored to that year. And, and maybe we should do a whole episode on that. That might be a cool topic mm-hmm. to do, actually. Um, speaking of CNCF, there's a whole bunch of uh, uh, different online events that are um, um, done through sort of the webinar series. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the ones I want to call out for this week is um, actually uh, the 11th and 12th, uh, 12 a.m. Pacific, I think I'm reading that right. Um, but you might have to look into that. It's called um, Run Wasm Shim This Way. Um, oh. And we had done a couple of yeah, <laughs> um, we had done a couple episodes um, with uh, sort of the topic of mm-hmm. a Wasm Web Assembly with Nigel Bolton and things like that. And um, this seems like a cool topic. Definitely go check it out. I think the whole Web Assembly sort of theme at KubeCon is yeah. definitely something that we still you know, keep see, you know seeing. So we're going to try to post those things as they kind of gain traction as well. Um, <clears throat> the other one is an article on a uh, backup for GKE. Mm-hmm. It's a concepts part series. Pretty cool. I think the whole idea um, in the blog is really enlightening if you're new to sort of data protection or uh, backup and restore capabilities and you use GKE. Uh, which is also relevant today's episode, yeah. actually. Um, you know, definitely go check this out. It kind of goes through the concepts of what's provided, what, and the, the particularly the piece I like is it really breaks down what it's backing up, what's yeah. in the backup versus what's not in the backup. Because yeah. I think that is confusing to many people where it's like, well, is my image backed up? Mm-hmm. Is, you know, is my service or load balance? What about my up? actual <laughs> cluster? Like, I've yeah, seen, exactly. I've heard that a few times. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. So uh, this article does a good job at that as well. Um, 
And the last one I have is uh, Nutanix. I've mm-hmm. uh, been around for quite some time. Uh, they announced something called Nutanix Data Services for Kubernetes, um, which is all about, as you may have guessed, data services uh, on Kubernetes <laughs> and sort of their, their way of kind of you know providing pre-built and managed mm-hmm. and those kind of things uh, on top of a, a, a number of different platforms, right? So very yeah. cool stuff. Go check out what they're up to. Yeah, that's and interesting. That's right? I used to work with Nutanix uh, yeah. at my previous job, and they had a similar service for virtual machine-based data service yeah. deployment called yeah. ERA. So I, I, again, this is something that I didn't catch, so I need to go and check it out, what go. they're doing for Kubernetes. Well, it's early release, so it's like, I don't know how ah. much you'll be able to yeah. really poke at it, but um, maybe you could be part of yeah. their early next, release. In, in next six months, I guess, then. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, now let's jump in and get our guests on the show. We have Kevin Backman, who uh, works at MLB, has been there for about 10 years, uh, Google Fellow and Senior Systems Architect there. He's kind of in charge of what we'll be talking about today, so a lot of fun and interesting things from him. And then also Mike Wagner, CEO of Metify, and he'll kind of talk to us about Mojo and what they've been able to do with their bare, bare metal environment. So without further ado, here they are. Hello and welcome to Kubernetes Bytes, uh, Mike and Kevin. It's so great to have you here. I won't spoil it for our listeners. Please give us a little bit of introduction of who you are and what you do. Why don't, yeah, why don't you go first, Mike? Cool. All right. So I'm Mike Wagner. I am the co-founder and CEO of Metify. And Kevin. Hi, I'm uh, Kevin Backman. I am a senior systems engineer for the systems infrastructure and engineering team for Major League Baseball. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah, we're here to talk about Major League Baseball and all things technology and Kubernetes. Um, and I think that's a really exciting topic. I myself, I played, you missed it a little bit before the show, Kevin, but we were talking about baseball, but I played Division One in, in college. So it's it's near and dear to my heart in a cross between technology and, and baseball. I, I'm you know long way from playing any sort of organized baseball anymore. I'd probably hurt myself, but uh, it's a, a fun little episode today. <laughs> yeah, Ryan, I played That's Division awesome. One baseball. I just saw one baseball match in my life for uh, like ever. That's it. <laughs> but I do have a Red Sox cap. Like if we want to support the local teams, like I can bring that on. <laughs> Good stuff. Yep. So uh, again, uh, I know Kevin and Mike, thank you so much, right? As Ryan said, for joining this episode, uh, we want to start with like that higher level overview. Like what does the technology stack at Major League Baseball looks like? And since you guys are on Kubernetes Bytes, I'm assuming it has something to do with Kubernetes. Can you give us, give us and our listeners an overview of what that stack looks like and how you use Kubernetes today? Yeah, sure. Um, I can jump in on that since, yeah, I'm... Major League Baseball. <laughs> um, so our, You're a good uh, person to talk to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, some people say I don't agree with them, um, but yes, no. So we, so we're pretty much heavily invested in Kubernetes. We've gone all in on mm-hmm. Kubernetes. Uh, the vast majority of our applications these days are running on a some form of Kubernetes. Okay. Um, you know, I don't like if you pay attention to the news at all. You've seen MLB and Google have a very close relationship on, um, in terms of you know, uh, sponsorship and all of that. Um, and so, you know, with that being said, we use heavily. We're heavily invested with GCP. Gotcha. All uh, GCP Kubernetes offerings, um, which you know, it in turn led to us rolling into Anthos or the ballparks, but I won't get ahead of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no worries there. Now, I know, um, you know, we're going to dive into a little bit about how you're using Anthos and how you got there. Um, but I do want to start with a little foundation about, like, what are the applications doing? I mean, mm-hmm. we have to put a little context um, to, to the story here. You know, were, were these applications already containerized? Were, you know, what are they actually gathering? How are they, you know, uh, connected with the actual sport of baseball? So the uh, the the apps themselves have been containerized for a while now, um, okay. but you know, obviously, they did not start that way. We at one point um, were still using VMware, like the, the traditional VMware bare metal yep. uh, stack. Um, about I'd say maybe five years now ago, okay. we started moving to Kubernetes. Um, initially, I think it was a lot of uh, AWS Kubernetes, and then we started branching out and exploring other options. Um, but to answer the question in terms of what we run, 
basically everything you see in terms of stat cost is based on Kubernetes. Like that's all, all GCP and uh, Anthos Kubernetes. Okay, so like Got if it. I'm going into Fenway Stadium, like that Fenway part, uh, that's what like I see uh, running there at each of these locations. It's just Kubernetes clusters on the edge, if I can say that. Correct. Yes, we have we do we have edge deployments for Kubernetes clusters talking with GCP as well. Gotcha. Okay, nice. That's exciting. Like, thank you for making it real in terms of like what apps are actually being hosted on those infrastructure stacks. Like we, we usually tend to focus a lot on the infrastructure piece, but then making it real actually helps uh, not just us, right? Yeah. Our listeners as well. Yeah. I mean, if you, if you're looking, if you're watching a game on TV and you look in the little corner of the screen and you see the score, that's Kubernetes. Okay. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> so do, do we have something like uh, the AWS stat that, that keeps coming up during NFL games? Like, because I watch a lot of those and it's always annoying. <laughs> But you haven't noticed it, which should tell you the answer, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm curious, though, you know, in terms of uh, like deployment at the stadium, um, is is the infrastructure that's running this actually physically in sort of stadium property or like nearby? Or how does that actually uh, work and look? It's physically in the stadium. OK, nice. nice. Like there, we have we have uh, little mini data centers in each stadium. You, God, so I guess to go with that, what about the Hawkeye stuff? Okay, because that's the stuff that is beyond cool, right? Is that are those also running on the, a different server stack, or is that running? Um, how does that work? Because that's that's the uh, the lasers and the high speed cameras that actually ah, right. uh, do yes. all the cool uh, tracking. The, track. So the player track that player tracking stack. Um, Hawkeye does, you know, a lot of the work, their own work, and okay. we provide, mm -hmm. you know, the the space for them to do it. Yeah. Um, and then their technology stack that they're running will communicate with our on-prem Kubernetes Very cool. stack okay. to then gotcha. move the data to uh, MLB. Makes sense. Makes sense. All right. So um, you mentioned you had been using VMware in the past, and this this was obviously a, a part of a new rebuild. When did it, when did it complete? Actually, like what year is it? Was it last year? Um, no. So it actually completed the initial the initial rollout completed in twenty twenty. Okay. Yeah, right in the oh, middle nice. of everything. That yeah. so yeah. made it probably yeah, nice and easy for you. <laughs> uh, um, sure, let's say it was easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a strong sarcasm there, of course. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, there's a lot of reasons, I think, that, you know, we talk to various guests on why they make large changes to infrastructure, large, you know, uh, moves from cloud to on-prem or whatever it may be. I'm curious, what was sort of the catalyst that drove MLB to kind of do this and kind of work with? Um, you know, Metify and, and everything like that. So we, like the, the, the whole initial, you know, onus of this was um, we needed to future-proof our, mm -hmm. our technology stack. Our technology mm -hmm. stack was a traditional VM running on bare metal, you know, um, required a lot of resources. It didn't have the redundancy we needed because, um, mm -hmm. you know, it was, V vSphere is stupid expensive and <laughs> you know you you're trying to now run 30 data centers with this price you know it gets sure it gets sure. a little eye watering the cost yeah. um <laughs> <laughs> and so like we were looking at something nimble agile and you know uh, cheap lightweight that we could just <laughs> roll <laughs> yeah yes <laughs> cheap a little um, bit of time. <laughs> yeah, <there you> go. <laughs> um, and then just you know something that we could roll out manage easily that you know doesn't take a lot of engineering hours to maintain as yeah. you know a lot of vSphere stuff does so uh we were playing around with rancher in mm -hmm. some okay. on-prem clusters just like proof of concept and you know we liked the idea of kubernetes we you know were, at this point we had just signed a deal with Google and we're starting to roll out a lot of GCP stuff. We we saw the the benefits of running everything in GCP Kubernetes, and so you know, then Google came to us and said, "Hey, by the way, see you guys. You know, you like Kubernetes. What about this?" And yeah. so we we decided, okay, let's give it a shot, and it worked out very well for us so far. 
Yeah, I'd, awesome. I'd love to hear your perspective on that, Mike, as well. Just sort of like, is that a common thing you see, you know, obviously beyond MLB and kind of what they've done as well? It is. Yeah, for sure. In fact, so cost drivers, um, reducing VM presence and sprawl and, and the VTAX and all of that. Mm -hmm. And then there's so there's a cost savings associated with that. And then, of course, there's there's just the simplicity involved in when you're working with bare metal and, mm -hmm. you know, you reduce overhead and you're speaking more directly to the application. So you get better performance, and especially with the build out of edge um, and hybrid compute in general, mm -hmm. you know, the whole term data center or whatever is kind of morphed into wherever the compute closet may be at this yeah. point. Um, and uh, yeah, so those low latency applications and uh, certainly, um, you know, just the desire to simplify infrastructure is uh, spiking, I would say, you know, people kind of got... Um, I was going to call it drunk on virtualization and cloud. And then you start realizing the bill is, is, <laughs> you know, it, it hurts the bottom line. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, there's, there's simpler and more elegant ways to do things now. And, and because open standards have kind of caught up, um, at a low level with this space, it makes enabling these bare metal clouds, um, and, and managing your own infrastructure a hell of a lot easier if you have the right tools. Um, so yeah. Gotcha. So yeah, exactly. Mike, like, Talking about the infrastructure stacks, right? What does the stack look like? Are they uh, general purpose x86 servers? And then how does Metify help MLB like bring everything up and like how does it actually work? Yeah, so this is very much a DIY thing, right? So the infrastructure okay. is there. Uh, we just, we're a software publisher. We've got uh, Mojo Platform is the name of our, uh, of our platform that um, makes running your bare metal uh, really easy. And mm -hmm. uh, so I'll, Kevin, uh, they've got a couple different, we, we, so since we work uh, with any hardware manufacturer, mm -hmm. right, this is all open standards based. The DMTF is the main open standards organization that uh, created the, the Redfish specification. Mm -hmm. And that Redfish specification has become ubiquitous. So mm -hmm. everyone, including the open complete o OCP, open compute platform guys, open BMC mm -hmm. projects, um, SNEA. Mm -hmm. Um, Swordfish, all of the other open standards are, are you know, making sure and writing um, their components into the Redfish specification itself. Um, so with that, we work across any hardware platform. And uh, Kevin has had a really unique uh, uh, suite of hardware, essentially, that I had to work together. Okay, yeah. <laughs> that provided some cool challenges for us. Um, okay. But uh, yeah, it was it was a blast to work with Kevin. I'll, I'll hand it over to you for the for your your hardware. I was going to say yeah. I heard a little bit of Kevin. That's a little bit your fault, but we were able to work. <laughs> <on that. laughs> uh, well, yeah. you know, uh, technology in, in ballparks is hard. Um, <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, yeah. So yes, yeah, so you know, as Mike alluded to, we have you know a lot of uh, at least you know in terms of overall data centers, mm -hmm. including minor league parks and all of that stuff that we support, we have a, you know, a vast array of different hardware. Yeah. You know, we have various versions, various Dells, super micros, all of that sort of stuff mm -hmm. uh, running. And, you know, it's, it's tough trying to get something that can talk to all of them at the same time easily. Yep. Um, and that's, you know, one of the, that's why, uh, why we're leveraging something like Mojo where, you know, cause like what in, in our use case, what Mojo does is that it will, you know, bootstrap a OS onto the bare metal, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that OS image is a custom image we built that has all the required packages to install our Kubernetes of oh, choice. Oh, that's awesome! Um, and then all we do is, you know, we will drop either an Ansible or Terraform uh, job, sure. and it will just roll out the cluster. Um, now you say we is that is that um, something you built or does Metify provide? Um, so it's a little a little column A, a little column B. Yeah, um, okay. <laughs> so yeah, so like Metify takes care of the bootstrapping mm -hmm. and OS image, and then okay. we have a bunch of automation tools we built around Ansible and Terraform that will then yeah. come in and take over and actually deploy the cluster itself. Got it. So, and, and using and using those common tools, uh, you know, makes it so you can do it the same or similar. I'm guessing at every park. Then. Yes. Um, so that you know, one of our primary uh, designs was that each major league park is identical. Got mm -hmm. it. Par hardware, cool. software, doesn't matter. They are all the exact same uh, hardware. So if you know, 
and it, this happens a lot. Like you have an issue in one ballpark and then yeah. you go to, you know, whoever support is and they're like, Oh, well, you know, this is it yep. happening everywhere. That's like, no, it's not us. It's you because <laughs> if, this was, if it was us, it would be happening everywhere. Yeah. yeah that's a, that's another big aspect for, um, as far as use cases go. I yeah. mean, so mm-hmm. distributed workloads, uh, and keeping a, a chain of custody and source of uh, record of what's mm-hmm. in that box, right? What are the rev levels on the BIOS? What are the rev levels on the firmware? You can picture, uh, you know, hundreds of servers, thousands of servers distributed around the country, around the world. Um, and if you do a, uh, a BIOS update and it, uh, mm-hmm. you know, uh, bricks a particular software application, you have to be able to do a rollback on that BIOS, yeah. rollback yeah. on that firmware. It might only be to a few boxes specifically, a few servers okay. specifically. Mm-hmm. So you have to be able to run a report against that. So mm-hmm. all those things are enabled through um, through Mojo and and all that low level, um, you know, chip level information of you know what are the BIOSes, what are the firmwares, what rep levels are they at, all of that gotcha. is dashboarded and yeah. and makes makes yeah. life like hopefully a, a bit easier for our customers. Okay. Yeah, well, I mean, while people are scared of the uh, the the cloud price tag, sometimes they still want the experience, right? So it sounds yeah. like that's kind of what you're delivering. Yeah. Man, that's ex- that's a perfect marketing line for it. <laughs> <laughs> Not being afraid. You're, you're right. Yes, yes. <laughs> no more fear of on-prem hardware. No, nice. I, I, I should say your hardware because it's never on-prem. It's always yeah. somewhere else. Well, it's it's on someone's prem, I guess. Yeah, that's, mm-hmm. that's yeah. it. I, I love that uh, that saying about you know what, what is the cloud? It's just someone else's computer. Just somebody else's. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> what, what is the edge? It's just somebody else's computer. You know, <laughs> it, it's, you know the, all the talk about the edge. What's the edge? Well, somebody else's yeah. computer, man. It's a little closer. <laughs> anyway, no, I digress. So, uh, going back to the to the orchestration piece, right? Like, okay, uh, you use Mojo to set up those infrastructure stacks, have the OS loaded, have all the packages. Then how do you take that next step and deploy Anthos? Do you deploy it across multiple stadiums at the same time? How does all of that work from OS to Kubernetes? Oh, so, you know, um, yes, we can deploy multiple parks at a time, you know, mm-hmm. in parallel with Mojo and our uh, Ansible and Terraform tools. Um, it has simplified... Uh, our lives immensely because you know I've I've actually been with MLB now for ten years. Okay. Um, oh. And when I first started, it was you know it would take you an engineer a good six hours to spin up a single park. Oh wow! Now okay. you've got 30, 30, 30 of those parks. Uh, opening day is you know <laughs> two months away, but technically a month away because a month before opening day we start going into uh, code. You know, mm-hmm. freezes and uh, heavy scrutiny, um, and so you have to work very hard in the off season to get everything done. Yeah. You know, fortunately, now with the automation, we can we can get that done in a week. Oh wow! For the, yeah, that's awesome. Wow. Yeah, like one engineer can can do it instead of having an entire team of engineers split the parks up. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's another cool thing worth mentioning about Mojo. We have a service catalog inside of it where you can have, um, you know, any number of uh, run stacks, right? Whatever you may need in terms of run times and particular stacks for different clusters and, and pooling of the resources and all of that uh, cool stuff that from a, uh, a low level admin perspective, mm-hmm. your, mm-hmm. your groups and, and developers require. So, um, yeah, that's all all within the tool and sort of makes it a one-stop shop to be able to handle all those things from OS firmware all the way up to and through the you know, cluster deployment and then the applications themselves. Got it. Gotcha. Yeah. Like all of this seems too easy, guys. Like I'm sure there <laughs> might have been challenges, right? Like we can't just, just hand waving happening. Yeah. <laughs> So, Kevin, right? Like, as you were going through the process, I think I read the uh, the blog that you published on MLB Stack site. Uh, mm-hmm. You maybe kicked off the project in 2019. The deployment was kind of in 2020. Like, what were some of the challenges uh, apart from all the people challenges that we were going through during the first year of the pandemic? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I mean, so you know, the, the yeah, so like the pandemic was a huge issue uh, mm-hmm. because a lot of this required hands on. Yep. Um, hands-on for our ballpark infrastructure teams that actually do the hardware installs. But, okay. you know, from our, our perspective, the, the, uh, the great, the biggest challenges is that, you know, like we, 
at the time, Anthos was still fairly new. Like we're rolling out this new technology. We've never done this before. We have to build this tooling out to help us. Otherwise, you know, we're we're manually doing everything. Um, I believe the the term we commonly use around the office is hand jam. Like you're hand jamming <laughs> everything in there, <laughs> and you know, like and it just and we and we're doing this all remotely like Mm -hmm. everyone is sitting on zoom now and you know we're still figuring out how to use or was it even zoom at the time i can't even remember um (laughs) it definitely took off but yeah yeah it's like it was i think it was yeah it was zoom so like we're all sitting on zoom calls trying to figure out how to work Mm -hmm. you know uh in a remote distributed way so that i think that was probably our biggest hurdle that we had to overcome yeah, someone's still got to show up and hook up networking, right? That was the only yeah. <laughs> once, you, once you move that on, then I guess that's a then you can move on from that. Um, yeah, speaking of sort of remote work, you know, you chose Antho. Sound like you tried a few others. Um, is is there sort of a, a management aspect that you take on for these ballparks, um, both from the aspect of Kubernetes itself, um, and I, I sort of get a. a an idea of what it looks like with Medify, but maybe we can answer the Kubernetes part and then maybe the Medify yeah. part. Um, so the one really nice thing about Kubernetes, uh, Anthos is that it kind of gives us a s- single pane of glass um, when managing sure. Kubernetes. Like we manage our Anthos Kubernetes clusters much like we manage our GCP okay. Kubernetes clusters. Like we have, you know, we, we have our OIC, you know, uh, uh, CICD, pipelines just plugged right into Anthos like it's just another GCP uh, cluster. Mm, okay. um, and, you know, we manage it like you would, a DevOps would manage any other mm-hmm. cluster. Like, and, you know, we we use tools like Argo CD for application, <laughs> to, continuous application deployment. Um, you know, we do, we, in, we enable the uh, developing te- developer teams to actually manage their apps directly like we give them the freedom and the uh, tools Mm -hmm. and with you know the guideline like little little bumpers here and there to help them out um but you know for the most part we just kind of let them do their jobs and like that is our primary goal is to let the devs do their jobs and not Mm -hmm. be a blocker to them like that's almost sounds like why organizations like yours need platform engineering, right? Like you want to make sure that developers are the most productive they can be while at the same time providing those guardrails to make sure that they don't paint outside the lines, I guess, and get you in trouble. <laughs> and break down production. <laughs> <laughs> Never happened right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so talking about developers, right? So they, uh, you said you use Argo CD, you have CI CD pipelines in place. So I'm assuming the dev work happens in the GCP like cloud clusters. And then when you, when it comes time to actually do the rollout or push applications, the production actually lives in these stadiums, right? Yes. Um, we have, you know, we have uh, virtual ballparks, which we, the devs will use to, uh, develop, you know, obviously oh, cool. test their apps and everything mm-hmm. um and then once everything looks good they roll the they will roll out the to production in the ballparks now you know with argo cd we everything is versioned if something goes wrong we can mm-hmm. easily roll it back mm-hmm. um we we can you know with all the uh deployments we have in the ballparks we can do blue green uh deployments so we you know if if something goes wrong, the end user doesn't normally see it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. that makes sense. And I, I think you know one of the things I was wondering as as we were going through this is you know I think you were uh, there was a huge leg up here with things already being containerized. You could kind of plug in. I think I read somewhere Argo CD to to this deployment. Was it truly plug and play, um, or like were there sort of a were there any lessons learned in this process? You know, of kind of getting the applications onto this new infrastructure. It, 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 the lessons learned were learned before we we uh, implemented Anthos, but you know okay. through. Uh, our rancher playing around with rancher like we did you know the we can't the ballparks aren't a hundred percent a gcp 
mm-hmm. environment. There, right. there is finite resources. You can't just auto scale. Yep. Um, yeah. <laughs> to me, because if you auto scale, uh, you suddenly start getting memory alerts and CPU <laughs> alerts for mm-hmm. machines, and you're going, "Oh wait, what's going on here?" <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> You never know. My team will be ready with another server. I know they don't manage hardware, but they might be ready to go with the Mojo platform. Yeah. Whatever and, needed. And, you know, yeah. Yeah, and I, I will say that it does make it easier to just be able to, as long as the server has uh, networking, we can mm-hmm. just you know, yeah, click a button and Mojo will kind of take care of the the initial part, and then we can take care of the rest. Gotcha. Yeah. So from the flip side, Mike, you know, is there, you know, something that was learned on sort of your side of things supporting this kind of use case? <clears throat> yeah. I mean, so they just had so many cool um, peripherals and they had, you know, the, the apps themselves had demands that uh, really provided all sorts of uh, learnings for us. So on the storage side, um, they had some uh, cool challenges that we wanted to integrate into Mojo. So we did that for their mm-hmm. RAID controllers. Okay. Um, so they can switch um, personalities of their, uh, you know, storage devices yep. within uh-huh. Mojo, check on the health of them, um, those types of things. And then um, there's, you know, hardware acceleration as well. They've got uh, NVIDIA, NVIDIA GPUs in there. So I think the 3080s, yeah? Um, uh, they're not 3080s. Um, I think that... I have to. I'd have to look, but yeah, um, they're a consu- consumer version of like enterprise okay. GPUs. Yeah, so just all of the different elements that MLB brings to bear with these kind of rich stacks that have to yeah. handle these edge-based, low latency, unbelievably high-performance workloads, and then they push up 7.2 terabytes of data each game for nice. all of the ravenous fans who can't get enough of their stats uh, in terms of you know. <laughs> Every possible statistic you can imagine. What's the revolutions per minute on a you know baseball leaving yeah. Kyle Crick's hand at uh, you know ninety eight <laughs> miles? It's a must an hour. have. I, I need to know this. Yeah. It's, it's, it's amazing. Well, I mean, I, and I have to tell well, him, Kevin. Can you, I, so after um, Aaron Judge hit his sixty second home run, we were on with Kevin. Uh, you know, we, we're on Slack all the time, and yeah. uh, I, I can't even recall what we were doing. But he's just like, you know, hey guys, you got to check this out. And he showed us Aaron Judge's home run in 3D as it was drawn by StatCast, as it was nice. drawn by the the lasers and high-speed cameras yeah. that track that. Unbelievable. Just the coolest thing to see, you know, <laughs> the exact trajectory of the ball, the total distance flown, the uh, speed of the ball coming off the bat. I mean, it's just beyond cool. The, the amount of tech that they have in there, um, it, it's just exhaustive and cool. So yeah, all of the chan- challenges associated with that gave us ample hardware to uh, learn how to mm-hmm. work with um, at a very low level. So it was just you, a lot of fun. You, you mentioned you know, the amount of data sort of, sort of after every game. Um, and, you know, we, you know, Bob and I both kind of have a background in sort of data storage and things yeah. like that. And and we, we often talk about this t- concept. So since you brought it up, um, you know, how are you using sort of the the different resources in Kubernetes, Kevin, to provide storage? Or are you doing something completely different to to provide storage to uh, these applications and things like that? So the uh, the applications on-prem are pr- like on the edge in yeah. our ballparks. Um, by, you know, uh, the design, they're very ephemeral. Okay. We don't, like, you know, if if something goes wrong, you know, it's it's fine. It just, the pod, it gets, the pod gets redeployed yep. and just keeps going. Okay. Um, it, the storage all happens uh, at on the back end, back mm-hmm. at uh, MLB headquarters. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, it's just we've been playing. I mean, we've been playing around with you know using Ceph or, or mm-hmm. uh, a similar uh, shared storage solution for just our, on-pre- our on-prem Kubernetes mm-hmm. in case of you know just a blip in network or sure, sure. you know something like if. If uh, if a if a backhoe decides that it's gonna munch yeah. on a fiber cable, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know the the, uh, the great North American uh, backhoe and its fiber okay. munching, um, <laughs> you know, like solutions like that, we're looking into to. Okay. Uh, tr- we've played around with it and it's shown some promise, but I think like that is something we will be definitely look, moving Got forward it. with uh, in the future. Got it. So today is it mostly streaming to object or like what, you know, what does that work? So um, the streaming, so, like the actual video feed mm-hmm. comes straight from our uh, video trucks in the ballpark. Yep. The stat cast, all the data, all yep. the player tracking, all of that goes through our Kubernetes uh, stack into GCP. Um, okay. okay. 
and that is everything. I mean, we we actually <laughs> we've actually had to uh, dial down the logging on okay. the, uh, the 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 apps because our apps were making Stackdriver fall over. Oh, Ooh. nice. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a few things going through there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's and that's just a single ball, ballpark mm-hmm. would would be making Stackdriver fall over. So we've had to you know tweak our our setup a little bit to help Stackdriver along. Wow, <laughs> just got it. Yeah, because it is a fire hose of data. Like we, yeah, I imagine. You know, we so track, that's that's the applications themselves communicating with sort of their parent application, say in GCP. Okay. Yeah, like for yeah. example, we have <laughs> we're using uh, AMQ. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. You know, to to push a lot of. Uh, messages and stuff yeah. containing yep. player tracking to our amq uh in gcp got it gotcha. okay. Okay. this you know all this um talk about sort of everything that you're you're gathering and all the the stats and making stack drivers fall over things like that you know i'm curious sort of what's next right you've gotten to this point are there um next stages for sort of your relationship with metify what you kind of have envisioned for this stack you know i i i my mind immediately goes to like watching a game in full vr or something like that but you know (laughs) yeah i like that uh i mean not to not to uh you know let anything out but like that <laughs> is something we are I would, love that. At. I would totally like, do that uh, oh. mlb and vr would be yeah. a huge a huge uh fan good I'll, I'll watch the space closely then it sounds like <laughs> yeah, yeah you also um, need to do a tie up with doordash or something like that to deliver those hot dogs as well <laughs> like you can't just <laughs> <have that experience. laughs> right, right. i need the full yeah, yeah. peanuts hot dogs everything <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, like we have, you know, like there's there's a lot of fan interaction we want to leverage um, mm-hmm. in the ballpark, and especially the way technology is going, it's going to allow us to, you know, make baseball way more interactive, way more fun uh, for your casual fan. Like, yeah, you know, sure. it's already yeah. fun for the for like hardcore fans, but yeah, you yeah. Know, yeah. Um, yeah. So I think you know, and in terms of Kubernetes, I, I think uh, the future is we want to make it smaller. Okay. more nimble yeah cool. maybe Academy. bring state on like use that safe rook combination that you just mentioned right yeah, have, some, state state. have yeah. some state have some state um have some permanence and you mm-hmm. know also like with all these special events we're doing like you know the the uh the series between in in mexico and oh, yes. the london yeah, series yeah. and all of that so Ooh. we want to be able to just ship our stack Mm. to these parks set it down turn it on and away you go oh, you have the full yeah. you have the full suite of uh, mlb tools oh that yeah. would be so cool like i remember when i went to ignite in microsoft ignite the conference in 2019 they had a humvee mm. that they were using with like the u.s army to sh- have these robust edge deployments of their oh, hardware right. and running yeah. something on top and then that automatically connects to azure i was like wow that would be so cool to have like you know in a new mlb stadium Yes. Um, yeah. Like we, we right now we have. Um, it's sort of we we like to call them fly packs that we mm-hmm. we're wanting okay. to build. Yeah. And the fly pack is what it is. It's going to sit on a crate. It's going to get on a plane. And it's going to go to London. It's going to go to Mexico, um, or you know, like wherever we want to and uh, host events. Like maybe even the World Baseball Classic. If oh, oh that'd be. I was going to ask about that. Yeah, it makes <laughs> sense. <laughs> And what about you, Mike? You know, in terms of sort of supporting bare metal Kubernetes deployments, since this is kind of the use case, what, yeah. you know, what's next for you? Uh, you know, um, so containerized applications, it's like over 50% of workloads now are, are um, on bare metal. <clears throat> so containers, um, it, it's the preferred application um, underlying architecture now for a number of reasons. And we see things continuing to trend in that direction, especially as Edge continues to grow. We've got... Um, we do work with the military, and uh, um, that Humvee reference was uh, very interesting because we we have some uh, <laughs> some work cool, yeah. exactly in that area with a, an, another partner of ours. Um, it's based out of uh, Virginia Beach, but um, yeah. And then with you know with MLB, it's it's just a blast to work with them. Um, mm-hmm. And we're now the minor league ballparks are beginning to roll on, oh, cool. which is another interesting challenge because each minor league park is its its own little creature. Yeah, as, yeah. as well. Um, but, uh, I, yeah, I mean, I just, I love baseball. So this is just a, a t- it's been a ton of fun working with these guys. And as far as, uh, the future goes, um, 
you know, all the industries and, and the growth of the edge and, and the growth of bare metal and people wanting to kind of take back and cloud this, this cloud repatriation yeah, movement yeah. that is, mm -hmm. uh, uh, in is sort of happening in earnest now, um, all play into, um, into our solution and our value proposition really well. So. Absolutely. Yeah, I know uh, Bob and I have definitely uh, spoken to a few guests uh, on that topic specifically. Um, it's definitely something that people are thinking about, especially in you know today's economic climate too, right? So, um, yeah, yeah. you know, we're 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 here about a half an hour, so I want to get to our little uh, chat GPT question uh, section. Uh, you don't have to answer, but if, if you you know sparks uh, something in your mind, then oh, yeah. then just go for it. But so we asked uh, Chat GPT to come up with a question about technology and baseball, and it came up with uh, with the increasing use of technology in major league baseball do you think it's possible for a robot to become a professional baseball player and break all the records <laughs> oh wow oh I, 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 you know i, yeah. I kind of love this own answer but i didn't know if you had any thoughts on that as well <laughs> um i don't think it will be possible for a robot to uh, become a baseball player i think it will be possible for a robot to become an umpire Hey, okay. oh, nice. yeah, I don't know how I feel about that being a being a, becoming, a I missed that. long time. <laughs> becoming a, an umpire. I mean, umpire. Oh, yes, that's happening. We have robot umpires in the uh, in the minor leagues. Yeah, so. <laughs> that will save a lot of uh, dirt being kicked on the field. A lot of ejections. <laughs> All the hats being thrown. Hats, <laughs> bats. Yeah, injuries. Oh. I mean, that's a big thing. I, uh, there's, I, there's nostalgia there for me, though. It's like the umpire is part of it. You know, I, I you know, it's a whole debate. That's a whole other yeah, podcast. Is, this, is true. this is true. <laughs> I think that a robot playing in in Major League Baseball. Well, I think as a as a demo project for Boston Dynamics, the guys. There you go. I mean, they they would love this. I mean, I think we can put this challenge out to them to have a Major League pitcher go up against Atlas. Right. We, it's going to take a little time to, teach, yeah. you know, teach Atlas to swing a bat. Um, but uh, we will absolutely uh, deliver that those bare metal servers for free for them. Uh, <laughs> if they want to take on that uh, AI challenge there um, we go. and there uh, we go. see if they can hit a ball coming from a major league baseball pitcher. Um, that would be beyond cool. Well, Just no really, curveballs, probably. That, yeah. I mean, that would be an insane or maybe robot. that's the next step, yeah. Yeah, especially with all the advances in AI and, uh, you know, robotics you know. overall, right? I mean, this would be a really... You never know. Well, I mean, well, ChatGPT itself thinks, basically, no way I could play baseball was its answer. Um, uh, even though, you know, they're very advanced, but it's it kind of, it, it, the answer it gave was kind of interesting. It says that because of the emotional intelligence and strategic thinking and the ability to kind of adapt to the the ever-changing game situation is sort of where it um kind of went to but then it also mm -hmm. says coming back to what kevin says about fans right is baseball is a sport with a strong culture and historical significance <laughs> fans <laughs> would never let a robot play baseball <laughs> maybe Man. they have their own league like i don't know i would watch that i don't know i don't know that, that was its answer so it doesn't have high hopes for itself i guess i just <laughs> maybe that's, that's good news for humanity right like if it believes that it can't go and be this human Maybe that's the next yes. evolution of Major League Baseball. Major League <laughs> Robotic Baseball. It's own league, yeah. I mean. <laughs> Anyway, Kevin, uh, Mike, it's been a pleasure having you uh, here on Kubernetes Bytes. I think that was very insightful, and it was yep. great to have such a you know close to home uh, sort of topic and use case. So yeah, it's our pleasure. Cool. All right, thank you so much for having Thanks. me. Fun guys. Yeah, yeah, have a good one. Oh, man, that was a lot of fun with uh, Kevin and Mike there. I think um, my love for the game of baseball mixed with technology made this, I think, just super fun. Um, but, you know, let's go into takeaways. What do you want to talk about? Yeah, take, I think my primary takeaway was we need to go and watch a game together this year in Boston. Like, I know Red Sox games have already started. We are in, in yeah. season. So let's do that. That's primary takeaway. Because uh, although I do get like the basic references, like the first base, second base, the home runs and things like okay. that, I was okay. not aware of the intricacies of having a, an unhittable curveball and things like that. So okay. I definitely okay. need to learn. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's, some, there's some kind of embedded uh, tribal knowledge there. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, but uh, overall, I think I, I love the fact that Kevin was able to share his transformation journey. Like we have always seen customers aiming to do something like this, right? Move on from uh, traditional legacy, maybe virtualization based infrastructure stacks over to Kubernetes. And one of the main reasons he listed as was cost, right? 
having to oh, run yeah. VMware's on on a, v, a VMware vSphere on top of his bare metal nodes and then run his applications, which might have already been containerized, and still having to pay for those licenses and not getting all the features and the resource utilization that he needs. Yeah. I think moving to containers, moving to something like Anthos that can still run on on bare metals provide that hybrid cloud solution for MLB. The, that was great. Like uh, there are, I'm I'm happy that this is like one of those public references, right? Where people have successfully moved from VMware to Kubernetes because yeah. believe me, right? Like there have been, there are so many customers, so many enterprises that are still using VMware. So episodes like this or success stories like this definitely gives those users out there some confidence that, okay, it is possible and you can trust Kubernetes to be that infrastructure layer for your production environments and it won't go down it's not just another open source project that you can't trust there is there are uh, uh, enterprises or organizations that are running it in production that was my biggest takeaway absolutely and i think you know even at this last kubecon cost is still a huge (laughs) theme even though kevin started this in 2019 um, i think cost as a theme is definitely something people are thinking a lot about right now so Mm -hmm. to hear this kind of thing uh, to go to bare metal and to be able to manage the complexity right i was thinking initially the term well isn't that more complex where you know they kind of found something that worked really good for them and kind of talked about the simplicity of it Mm -hmm. um along with sort of the gains of performance and things like things like that which leads me to sort of where i was kind of you know my takeaway was sort of the future proofing that kevin and uh, mike talked about which is more or less like building an infrastructure stack that could grow with mlb right it could really take on um not only the 30 some odd parks in the u.s that they're they were aiming to and be able mm-hmm. to deliver those quickly and roll out you know updates but also take on things like you know the the minor league uh, yeah. stadiums like to, to to be able to kind of pr- future proof it in a way that they can go ahead and take that and and ship it somewhere else right and and run it the same way whether that's minor leagues or in you know those special city games in london and things like that so that's really cool to me i think kind of building that stack in a way that can grow with you is is one of the reasons i've always looked at kubernetes as yep sort of a um a really interesting you know technology in general so For yeah, sure. that's i think that's the the takeaways from us uh mm-hmm. you know hopefully you got as a listener some of that as well as maybe pick something else out of it like you know can a robot um actually hit a, <laughs> hit a curveball or not and we'll see uh, we, yeah. we can no. to boston dynamics so come talk to us about that i guess no i um, think uh, yeah. we also need to remind our, our listeners right like thank you for supporting the podcast but like we still need to grow our audience like it's already up there but we need to take it even higher so if you can just share like i know memorial day weekend is coming along uh, i don't know before with your workmates or with somebody you know who's still interested in this kubernetes technology share this podcast right like just everybody if they share it with one more people that would really help us out so i just wanted to do a shameless plug before we wrap up this mlb episode yes absolutely if one if you share it with one other person that goes a long way it mm-hmm. really does so we appreciate that and again for your listenership um always means the most to us and uh with that that brings us to the end of today's episode i'm ryan i'm Bobin. and thanks for joining another episode of kubernetes bites Thank you for listening to the Kubernetes Bytes podcast. 